I work on robots that are only a few millimeters on a side and there's a lot of challenges that come with that. Basically I'm working on figuring out what's different at that scale and take advantage of the of the differences at a very small scale. This is just a mechanism, there's no motor on it. I got a little tired of seeing small robots that could only move across very flat, smooth surfaces and so uh, when I was in graduate school, I got the idea that I wanted things to jump instead. And so by jumping, you could get over very rough terrain and do that in a mechanical way. And so now I'm looking a little bit more about using legs to do the same thing that I was trying to use the jumping to accomplish. You can imagine dumping a bucket full of these robot ants into rubble after a natural disaster, for example. And these ants have just enough power to be able to say, hey, search over here, there's somebody down here. Ultimately what we're trying to do with these small robots is put sensors, motors, mechanisms all in a very very small package, millimeter scale package. So imagine now sticking that at the end of a catheter. And so now you can do potentially medical interventions that would have previously required much more complex, much more harm to the person in terms of incisions and stuff. And you can do that which with much less trauma, potentially, to the patient. Trying to create very small-scale robots is just an ongoing challenge that I think will continue being a challenge, both how you move, uh, how you sense at these small scales, how you compute at these small scales, how you communicate at these small scales, how you power yourself at these small scales. Everything's a challenge. You know, it's something that not a lot of people have worked on, and there's a lot of unanswered questions.